Blessed be. I'm Lady Amaris and welcome to the Circle of Hecker. So let's look at spells. Spells is what everyone is after, isn't it? And so you've got a spell for this and a spell for that. You do a, uh, a search on, on uh, Google and it's uh, a spell for, for attracting a lover, a spell for repelling a lover, a spell for uh, attracting wealth. Spells here, spells there. So how do they work? And how can you do them yourself so that they will work? Now magic or spells is the art and science of causing change to occur with the conformity of the will. So it is an art. Cultivating an imagination is all part of spell work. If you cannot imagine a thing, then you cannot get the thing. We are creators of our reality. So we need to start learning how to create, how to become creative, how to learn how to um, build our imagination again. If you have been brought up on a diet of television, then your imagination may not be as good as those who've been brought up with going outside, having a box in the backyard, and that box being a boat, being a ship, being a house, being whatever it is, because you've imagined it that way. So cultivating an imagination is the first step in effective spell work. Now it's an art and a science. So we need to take notes. We need to experiment and we need to take good thorough notes. We need to find out what works for us and then we need to be able to repeat that. And you cannot repeat something if you don't write down what it is that you've done. So your book of shadows, your spell book, these are repeatable spells that you have worked out by taking notes. Now to start off we need a plan. You need to plan out your spell. You need to find out what it is that you want to do. When do we need to do it? Why are we doing it? And how are we going to do it? So you need to find out all the ingredients that need to go into a spell, uh, why they need to be in there, how are we going to put it together, um, when should we do this, how long is it going to take, and ultimately when we're planning, do we really need to do the spell? Is there a better way of doing something do it that we may not need to resort to spell work? And also, what is the desired result and will all my planning get that desired result then once we've got all our bits and pieces together we need to relax we need to quieten the mind we need to be able to focus once we have quietened the mind then we do our concentration we concentrate and visualize so this is where our imagination comes in we need to visualize what it is that we are desiring our manifestation of our desire we need to see it so much it needs to be so real that we can hear it we can smell it we can taste it we can touch it we can see it from all sides above and below every 360 degrees we can see the manifestation of our result in our mind's eye once we have that visualization then we project our energy we project our energy into the sigil, into the candle, into whatever it is that we have used in our planning stage. We project our energy into that. And then we let it go. We forget about it. We don't worry at all. We trust that the work will be done. Now if you continue to go back and forth, back and forth, oh is that spell, we want to better check on that spell, oh I wonder if that spell worked, hmm, let's have a look. Each time you keep doing that, you haven't forgotten about it, you haven't let it go, and you're not allowing your subconscious mind, you're not allowing the universe, you're not allowing the goddess and god, whoever it is that it's petitioned to and whoever, however you believe that manifestation is going to happen, you're not letting them 
do it. You're not letting your subconscious mind manifest the results because you keep interrupting. You keep interrupting. So it's like a thought, it's like a sentence. You keep interrupting someone in the middle of a sentence, they'll never finish the sentence. So stop it. Relax, let it go. Trust that it will work. Now your magic takes the path of least resistance, which means it's going to take the easiest route. It's not going to take the hardest, longest, convoluted route. It's going to take the easiest route. Now also, if you are doing a spell and your magic encounters a force that is greater than your own, then your spell will not work as expected or it will not work at all. So you need to keep that, keep that in mind. Path of least resistance and if a, there's a force that's greater, it will shoot off in the wrong direction or will not work at all. Be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. So in the planning stage, working out, finding out what it is that you want, whether you need to do a spell in the first place, and then owning the consequences of your spell, good or bad. Now spells take a certain time frame to, to manifest, and it usually happens in, in threes or in a moon cycle. So it may take one month to manifest, from new moon round back back to new moon or from full moon to full moon whenever it is that you've you've done your spell but normally when you're starting out it may take on average about three months for your spell to manifest so it always happens in threes now if you're on point and you're really good it could take three days it could take three hours could even be three minutes depending on what it is that you are trying to manifest. Now this manifestation will happen in mundane ways. It's not like the Hollywood uh, movies where you will ask for something and then there will be a flash of light or a, um, some glitter will fall down from the sky and your, your, the thing that you have asked for will suddenly materialize in front of you. It doesn't happen that way. Remember, we are living on a material plane, a gross, uh, solid plane, where things will happen in what's seen as a mundane, practical way. Your spell is set up to align different forces together so that that may manifest in a practical way. Now we have what's known as the realm of possibility. Now when you're doing a spell, whether it is going to work or not will always matter whether it is part of your realm of possibility. What is possible for you? What do you believe is possible within your spell? Now this has been manifested because of what your subconscious mind has been programmed with. So the spell works in programming your subconscious mind to work on a, uh, a certain matter. Now, if your subconscious mind has been programmed from the day you were born so that you believe certain things about yourself or say certain things about your family, let's use a, an example of, oh, our family has always been poor. Our family has always struggled for certain things. Our family, we're, we're, a, we're battlers. We're a battler family. Then you are going to subconsciously believe that everything takes hard work to do nothing happens naturally everything that happens in your life you have to scrimp and save and you have to scratch out and eke out a living for because you have been programmed subconsciously to say that our family has always had the shitty end of the deal so you're going to have to work to change how you view yourself on a subconscious level and that will take time and that will take taking away the layers so that your spells will work more effectively the more you believe they will work and the more you believe that you deserve certain things so how effective your spell is depends on your realm of possibility what you believe is possible so then the spell will not work in the way that you want it to or will take a long time if you don't believe 
that it will happen in a short amount of time. If you believe that it will take time to work on, then it will manifest in that way. So what I suggest is doing small little spells, almost trivial little spells, little things that you're not really that attached to, you're not really that uh, wanting to worry about too much. And that will be the form of a practice so that you do small little spells that you can forget easily because they don't really matter much to you. You're not, you don't have that emotional investment in that spell so that you can let your subconscious do the work unhindered. Now, when you have these small little wins and these small little spells, this will boost your confidence and will expand your realm of possibility. So the more that you do the smaller little spells, you become practiced in moving energy, forgetting about the spell. Then when the spell manifests, it boosts your confidence so that then you can start doing bigger and bigger and bigger things. One little thing, always remember that energy goes back to the source. It is like a, a, an electrical loop. Energy will always come back to the source and back again, around and around and around and around. So what you send out, you will ultimately get back. It may not be in exactly the same form as you sent out. It may be less, it may be more. It's not that the Wiccan, what you send out, will come back times three. It'll come back to you and it may be a massive toe up the butt or it may be a little bit of a, a little bit of a stubbed toe whatever it is so remember if you are sending out baneful magic bad juju it will come back to you eventually blessed be